हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक वंस अगेन टू आवर ऑनलाइन एजुकेशनल वीडियो सो फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम द सेवरल वीडियोस वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम एंड एज पर द सिलेबस ऑफ फार्मेसी काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया वी डिस्कस ईच एंड एवरी टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू द डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम you can see we have prepared the lot of videos and you can see over the screen the thumbnails of various videos so far uploaded over our youtube channel so as far as this video is consider it's going to be a very last video for the topic digestive system we covered each and every topic mentioned in our syllabus and this is for the last time we are going to discuss about the functions of atps last video was prepared it was considered as a part 8 where we explain how does atps are going to be formed and now we are in the last part of the our chapter digestive system where we are going to explain and understand the functions of atp we know very well now how the atps are going to be formed so the last one we should also know the functions of atp so let us start our topic functions of atp so the number of functions in which the atps are found to be involved the very first function we have taken over the screen it is active transport now we know very well that we, there are various transport mechanism by which substances can move across any biological membrane the various mechanisms are there by which the transfer of substances across the biological membrane takes place so active transport is the one of the mechanisms involved therein in active transport the transport of substances takes place the transport of macromolecules takes place in the form of proteins lipids or whatever the substances that has been administered so whenever the substances are administered in our body and they are required to be distributed throughout our body so during their distribution throughout our body they need to cross the many biological membrane so the transport of these substances throughout the biological membrane takes place by many mechanism and one of the mechanism involved it is the active transport in fact we have discuss this mechanism somewhere in the chapter various mechanism of transport of substances across the biological membrane where we studied about active transport passive transport that is carrier mediated transport pinocytosis filtration etc so what is this one in case of active transport the substances in the form of macromolecules or the substances what whatever has been administered in our body and required to be distributed throughout the, our body need to cross the biological membrane if the substances are moved from the region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration that kind of mechanism is known as a active transport and whenever the substances are required to move from the area of lower concentration to the area of higher concentration they require the energy and this energy is generally provided by means of the atp so during the hydrolysis of atp the required energy for the active transport mechanism is provided so just because of what the energy is made available it is made possible for the substances to move from the area of lower concentration 
to the area of higher concentration by crossing any biological membrane. This can be well understood with the help of this image where you can see this is the area of lower concentration this is the area of higher concentration you can see here is a higher concentration of substances and here is a lower concentration of substances and this is nothing but what the biological membrane so whenever the substances are required to get transported from the region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration they requires the energy and this energy is provided by means of ATP so that is nothing but what we studied the very first function that ATP has to be carried out so whenever these substances moves inside the cell so it may be the cellular membrane so if the substances are going to move inside the cell so at this time this should be considered as an intracellular region this should be considered as a extracellular region so when the substances move inside the cell it is known as endocytosis and if the substances move from intracellular region to the extracellular region at that time it is known as a exocytosis so the transport of molecules into the cell is called endocytosis while the transport of substances out of the cell is known as exocytosis so now we got very well understood the very first function of ATP that they are involved in the active transport of substances across any biological membrane. The second function in which the ATPs are involved it is the cell signal. It is a key function in both intracellular and extracellular signaling. Means it is just because of the ATP the changes in the intracellular environment or the extracellular environment can be identified so it carries ATP carries the signal by which the any cell can identify the changes in intracellular or the extracellular region so whenever these changes are identified then our body is made ready to fight against that crisis and these intracellular and extracellular signaling signaling can be made by the release of by the release of ATP from the axon terminals so it has been said that along with the neurotransmitter ATPs are also released and these ATPs at this time acts on their own receptor and these receptors are known as a purinergic receptor due to the activation of this purinergic receptor the ATP modulates the calcium modulates the release of calcium inside the cells and thereby it gives the appropriate response number three the ATPs are involved in the structural maintenance of a cell means ATP plays the important role in preserving the structure of the cell by helping the assembly of cytoskeletal element it is just because of ATP the several cellular organelles are maintained at their own place these ATPs are also involved in the movement of cell organelles within the intracellular region which is generally required at the time of cell division so whenever the cell division is required to be takes place at that time these cell organelles are moved at the two different ends so that the cell division can take place properly cell organelles are moved at the two ends each and every cell organelles are moved at the two ends so that the cell organelles can get distributed equally into the two parts so the movement of these cell organelles across the two ends is made possible just because because of the energy derived from the ATP it also supplies the energy to the flagella flagella for example in case of the sperm flagella is present and this flagella consists of large number of ATPs so the sperm movement it is just because of what the energy is provided to the flagella by means of ATP 
it also supplies the energy for the chromosome to maintain their appropriate functioning the next important function that atps are involved it is the muscle contraction so atp provides the energy to the muscles by which the contraction can take place so atp is critical for the contraction of muscle it binds with the myosin myosin it is the one of the it is one of the protein filament present in the muscles so it binds with the myosin to provide the energy and due to the activation of this myosin the actin and myosin filaments of the muscles slides over each other to provide muscular contraction the last function in which the atps are involved it is the synthesis of dna and rna these are considered as nucleic acid deoxyribonucleic acid and ribose nucleic acid atp generally used as a energy source for the activation of several enzymes which are needed to initiate and sustain the dna synthesis at the replication so by the activating the certain enzymes required to initiate dna synthesis required to sustain dna synthesis is carried out by the atp in the synthesis of nucleic acid rna atp is one of the four nucleotides incorporated directly into the rna molecules by rna polymerase so as far as the functions of atp is are considered we said that the atps are involved in the active transport atps are involved in the cell signaling atps are involved in the muscle contraction atps are involved in structural maintenance and the last one that is the synthesis of dna and rna so that's all and this was the last video as far as the digestive system is considered so thank you very much for watching and for any query doubt or the suggestion feel free to comment and do not forget to like video and subscribe the channel if you found beneficial thank you very much